Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There, is, there was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and in his, my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. <laughs> May I speak to you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Some of you will know the novel by C.S. Lewis called The Great Divorce, which is a bus tour through hell slash purgatory <laughs> and heaven. And the narrator finds himself in hell, which is not a place with leaping flames, but it's a dull colorless gray city, like a suburban sprawl that just goes on and on. And he's puzzled. He says, it doesn't look like there are a lot of people here. So was this originally more populated? And this is the answer he gets. As soon as anyone arrives here, he settles in some street. But before he's been there 24 hours, he quarrels with his neighbor. Before the week is over, he's quarreled so badly that he decides to move. Very like he finds the next street empty because all the people there have quarreled with their neighbors and moved. So he settles in. If by any chance the street is full, he goes further. But even if he stays, it makes no odds. He's sure to have another quarrel pretty soon and then he'll move on again. Finally, he'll move right out to the edge of the town and build a new house. <laughs> just endlessly expanding. And he begins to wonder, well, what about the folks who got here first, who've been here hundreds of years? And this is what he learns. They've been moving on and on, getting further apart. They're so far off by now that they could never think of coming to the bus stop at all. 
astronomical distances. There's a bit of rising ground, says one of the characters, near where I live, and a chap has a telescope, and you can see the lights of the inhabited houses where those old ones live millions of miles away, millions of miles from us and from one another. And every now and then, they move further still. Now, that, that picture of hell as isolation is, in many ways, I think, the exact mirror opposite of the readings we've had this morning. During the season of Easter, it's customary for us to pay special attention to the book called The Acts of the Apostles, the first book of church history that was written. And, of course, Acts tells the story of how the news of Jesus' triumph over death, it spreads all throughout the Mediterranean world. And in our reading from Acts this morning, we heard about how the, the heralds of that news began to live differently in light of their faith in the resurrection. The reading said, Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions. But everything they owned was held in common. They pooled their resources to make sure that no one was left out. It's, it's the exact opposite of that sprawl that just goes on and on. There was not a needy person among them. For as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. And they laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. That same richness and beauty of community life is also celebrated in our psalm for this morning. Listen again to those words from the poet. How very good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. The poet says this is so beautiful and glorious. He, he reaches for the image of precious oil making the face shine or the, the fresh fallen dewdrops that are glistening on the hills of Zion. That's how beautiful and wonderful this togetherness is. The giving and receiving of care, friendship, camaraderie. These are the gifts that the psalmist is rejoicing in. And then we come to our epistle reading, which circles around the very same theme. St. John declares that he and other eyewitnesses of the risen Jesus have announced the good news with the result that many more people have become believers and are now becoming siblings to one another. He says, we declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. Fellowship, it's such a rich word in the New Testament. Koinonia, communion, togetherness. That's what John is celebrating. And then he does something curious. He says, we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. Now, I might have expected him to say, we're writing these things so that your joy might be complete. But he says, we're writing to you, fellow believers, so that our joy may be complete, because you yourselves are part of us. You are part of our joy. There's, a, there's an inter- dependence and interweaving of their lives together. My joy is incomplete without yours and vice versa. Now most of us, I imagine, if we have a visual image of Easter in our minds, I would guess for most of us it's a vertical image. Think about the, the metaphor. Jesus is rising from the grave. He's been lying still in the tomb and now he's rising from the grave. One of the most famous paintings of the resurrection by Piero della Francesca from the 1460s pictures Jesus holding a, a victory flag and his right foot is standing on the, the slab of his tomb and it's as if he's about to spring into action. He's rising up. He's going to shoot up into the sky, it almost looks like. Now, I don't think that's 
a bad image, but I want to place a horizontal image alongside that vertical one. There's another famous painting of the resurrection, an icon, which is very popular among Eastern Christians, and it shows Jesus standing on the trampled and cracked and broken doors of hell. And with his arms, he's reaching out, grabbing hold of an elderly-looking couple who are Adam and Eve, who've been stranded in the underworld, and he has now come to set them free, to bring them out of their prison. There are a lot of reasons I love that icon, but what most strikes me about it today is how the the strife and the, the acrimony that Genesis says existed between Adam and Eve, Jesus is overcoming that. He's not just vertically ascending. He's he's bringing these two together on the horizontal plane. He's making reconciliation possible between human beings. One Catholic theologian says, fundamentally, the gospel of Jesus is obsessed with the unity of human society. Togetherness. Fellowship. Well, I don't know how this is striking you. It may be that you're sitting there thinking, this all sounds very nice and pious, but have you ever actually tried living with other human beings? <laughs> Togetherness is not always what it's cracked up to be. How is this not just sort of wishful thinking, fantasizing? I suspect, it's certainly true for me, that most of us feel more aware than perhaps we ever have before of just how many gulfs separate us from each other. Ideological gulfs, political gulfs, gulfs of distrust, fractures and ruptures in our social fabric. It can feel at times as if we're looking at those vast empty spaces in C.S. Lewis's gray town where no one is willing to live next to anyone else. So for us to hear these scriptural celebrations of life together in communion, well, that can seem like sort of pious hopes that aren't actually real. And this is why I think our gospel reading is so important. St. John tells us that in the evening, on that first Easter Sunday, Jesus returned to the very ones he had the most reason to hate. The ones who should have been standing by him in his hour of direst need, and they hightail it away to save their own skin. He comes back to them, and he does what I probably would not do. He doesn't announce condemnation or anger. He says simply, peace be with you. The pure victim, the one who did no wrong, the one who lived at no one else's expense, comes back to his victimizers and says, peace be with you. The risen Jesus doesn't simply announce peace. Another writer in the New Testament says that he himself is our peace. In his flesh, crucified and risen, he has made both Jews and Gentiles into one and has broken down the dividing wall, which is the hostility between us. And so here we are, trying however however imperfectly, however Fitfully, here we are together this morning, you and I, trying once more to embody that vision. To live in harmony and fellowship with one another. Knowing that the basis of our togetherness is that word peace. Peace. A few years ago, one of, uh, one of Britain's most celebrated writers returned to Christian faith. His name is Francis Spufford. And he wrote about beginning to go to church again. And he goes to a small little parish, or at least he did at the time, in the Church of England. And he writes about the coffee hour. 
I just want to read you a little bit of what he says, because this is really what it comes down to. If you come to a parish church in England after the service, what you will see is a small crowd of elderly people, <laughs> middle-aged people, and young families balancing biscuits and cups of coffee in one hand as we do crowd control on the children with the other hand, and making slightly awkward conversation about the weather, holidays, cricket scores, the news, the progress of flowers and vegetables, and we don't necessarily have very much in common with each other by all the usual standards. We're embarrassed, probably, after all, this is England, and yet that's not all that is going on. We're also celebrating the love feast. Our hearts are in our eyes as we look at each other. We are engaged in the impossible experiment of trying to see each other the way God sees us. That is, we're trying to see one another as if we were all precious beyond price for reasons quite independent of any of the usual cues for attraction we jump to recognize. Status, charisma, beauty, confidence, wealth, wisdom, authority. We don't know, each one of us, what the others needed forgiving for, and we never will. But we know they were forgiven, as we were, and for whole moments, we manage to see with calm, kind ease. And though we are many, we say, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Koinonia, fellowship, togetherness across the gulfs that divide us. This is our Easter hope. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for the just and proper use of your creation,
for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Skip, our assisting bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. <coughs> for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Safadin Abu Taha. Les Waswami Francom. Damien Sobol. Jacob Flickinger. John Chapman. James Henderson, James Kirby. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, a very warm welcome to you on this second Sunday of Easter. Uh, I am not Father Jared Kramer. He is uh, enjoying some well-deserved rest. My name is Father Wes Hill, and I'm filling in this week, although this is my home parish, so it's, it's a great joy to be able to, uh, to pray with you today. Do we have any birthdays this week? Great. Come on down. Let's, the rest of us, turn to page 830. Let's pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant as he begins another year. Grant that he may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen his trust in your goodness all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Any anniversaries? No. Well, if you're a first-time visitor with us, please feel very warmly welcome. There's a coffee hour immediately following the service that you would be uh, most welcome to, to join us for. 
Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Father Lord, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.
was wonderful. <laughs> but you know, if you have too much of that, it's kind of Pardon? 